guys for joining. Uh, I hope I can live up to the wonderful presentation. Uh, so uh, you can see a word of warning out there. A uh, highly hyperlink presentation because uh, you just see I'll be clicking on some stuff and uh, hopefully it's gonna work. Okay, so before we dive into the content, I just wanna wanted to introduce myself. Uh, perhaps tell you some things that you don't know about myself, that, but that might be useful to your own career path and all of that. So it seems very startup-y <laughs> to post childhood photos uh, these days. So here I am. I'm from Milan. This is Tidro. And uh, yes, so that's the school I went to in the UK, uh, music specialist boarding school. So uh, it will be relevant later on, what I'm saying right now, that uh, I had a very musical upgrade, upbringing, right? So that's what it was like. But that's what it was really like, you know, practicing 24-7. I also worked for some time at the Collège du Le Mans in Geneva, which is a leading international uh, boarding school. So that's the outline of today's presentation, okay? So we we'll start with the what, okay? What is AR? Uh, we'll, then we'll move on to the why and I'll give you uh, four main reasons why we should be using AR in education. Uh, one of them being related to a more general context. Uh, the second one relating to the pedagogical benefits that come with using AR in education. And uh, the third one relating to functionality. Uh, and then the fourth one relates to the cognitive benefits of using AR in education. Next, I'm going to propose some action plans that teachers can implement uh, to make sure that uh, AR okay, is, is used in that classroom. Right. So let's let's. I'll just I'm just going to give you a simple technical definition of AR. Now I hope the IT people uh, that are following the webinar right now uh, will won't frown upon me. But uh, basically, AR consists in augmented augmenting real world visuals with computer generated inputs. Now it's important to uh, note that this computer generated input does not just consist in graphics. It can be a uh, audio or videos or videos with audio. Now, to this day, the computer input can be generated in two ways. We can use a mobile phone or tablet or AR glasses. AR glasses are still not widely adopted, but they do offer enormous um, educational potential. However, given that this is not a tech talk, uh, but rather a digital skills tutorial aimed at teachers, uh, most of this webinar will focus on the mobile AR experiences. As teachers, we um, are sometimes obliged to do the best we can with the resources that we do have now. In any case, you can see on the left um, a tablet example, and you can see on the right uh, an AR glasses example. So we are still in the what section. If you remember at the beginning, I outlined uh, the structure of this tutorial. Uh, okay, if we want to list the major subcategories into which AR can be divided, uh, we have marker-based AR, where the digital world is anchored to the real world. The image, can be anything as long as it has it has enough unique visual points. Okay, so an image needs to be recognized uh, by the AR device for the experience to work. Markless, markerless AR instead refers to those applications that do not require a sort of anchor to the real world. Visually speaking. This um, can sort of result in virtual objects that can appear to float in midair. Location-based AR uh, is instead tied to a specific location, and we will dive into that later. The best way to um, facilitate markerless AR, I'd say, is using AR glasses. 
though for the aforementioned reasons, this tutorial um, focuses mainly on mobile AR experiences. Here we are in the why section now, where I give you uh, a few reasons why you, me, and everybody else for that matter, should be using AR in education, okay? Now, first of all, we need to place AR in a broader context, okay? In a broader context relating to education technology. Uh, the, this book cover you can see here is the cover of a book by Niall Selwyn. And this book informed much of the structure of this webinar. So the author in the book distinguishes between two categories that influence the use of technology in education. The first one is what he calls the external imperatives. The second one is what he calls the internal imperatives. Although uh, it does not specifically concern with augmented reality, this book discusses education technology thematics using different perspective takings, multiple contextual approaches, and a critical thinking method. Okay, so before we think about AR, we need to think about education technology. The external imperatives are determined by society and technological trends. Okay, you can see three of them here that motivate the use of technology in education in general. You can see the so-called digital natives, which are born in a day and age uh, where they're exposed to technology from an from a early age. I mean, you can see here the knowledge economy, obviously uh, the digital skills required um, to thrive in um, our current and future work environment. And you can see life skills on a more basic level. Students need technological skills to survive their day-to-day -day living. Okay. Now, mobile phones uh, come with a lot of benefits. We have just seen that uh, they allow to place AR into a broader context, justifying its usage. There is a pedagogical reason connected to mobile phone usage that justifies the use of AR, okay? which is ubiquity. Basically, ubiquity means uh, being able to access uh, something anytime, anywhere. Okay, and going back to the structure proposed by Niall Selwyn, the author of the book, ubiquity uh, qualifies as an internal imperative, an imperative related to the pedagogy and education itself. In fact, there's a new theory of learning called ubiquitous learning. Uh, that specifically refers uh, to mobile phones. Although on a, on a more academic note, it must be noted that if you then go on Google after this tutorial and search mobile learning and ubiquitous learning, you see that some academics do treat them as separate theories. Okay, But due to time constraints, we'll associate mobile phones with ubiquity for today. Now, one question might arise from here. Okay, Mo I am saying here, mobile phones do come with educational benefits. Okay, but then why use mobile AR experiences instead of a standard app? What's the added pedagogical value of AR? So, when combined, with the ubiquity of mobile learning, which consists in a limited accessibility, AR also uh, allows uh, unlimited access to content quality. Okay, the quality on the con of the content is not compromised if we use AR. Okay, so something. Uh, can be accessed anytime, anywhere, and the quality won't be lost. Okay, this sounds very theoretical. I'll just give you an example. Let's imagine your class 
was going on a school trip to the Netherlands, where numerous wind turbines can be found. Instead of accessing a mobile app that shows them photos of the turbines before and or after the trip, the students would be able to um, visualize the workings of the turbines through AR, which would offer a more detailed outline of the structure of the turbines. Okay? So, we previously, we previously examined how mobile phones enable pedagogical development, such as increased accessibility to quality content. However, um, this is what I call the AR paradox, because at the same time, uh, AR enables place-based education, okay? So, AR technologies can facilitate place-based and situated learning. The specific subcategory of the AR technology that enables that is what has been called before as location-based AR, okay? So place-based education aims at involving students in problem-solving activities by getting them involved in real-world experiences in their own community. AR can provide a valuable scaffolding prompt by keeping students with detailed local information through location-based technology. So this means that you want to organize an activity around campus, okay? The students can use a location-based AR app and scan different elements found on campus and retrieve information on them. However, it must be noted that the usage of AR in itself does not contribute to the creation of a place-based learning experience. As this needs to be integrated into an inquiry process, okay? Uh, so, like I previously mentioned, AR is just a prompt, okay? AR gets the student interest in the details of the elements of a certain location. The teacher then needs to design uh, a problem-solving activity around it. Unlike place-based learning, situated learning is localized but not necessarily local, okay? So what is its effectiveness still depends on, in, on its contextuality and its, its experiential nature. The environment where it takes place does not necessarily need to belong to the student's local community, okay? In other words, should we decide to adopt the aforementioned definitions. Place-based learning can be considered a subcategory of situated learning, whereby the latter can be both local and non-local. Now, let's uh, let's see if we can find another benefit of AR. But before, I wanted to redirect you to this. Here we have Med City Mystery. Okay. This video link shows an augmented reality game called Mad City Mystery, okay, that took place at the University of Wisconsin Madison campus near Lake Mendota in the US. Okay. So the game takes from 90 to three, 90 minutes, sorry, to three hours. Okay, so there's a briefing, there's a gameplay, there's a deep briefing. You can see here, this was, this concerns with the developments of AR at very early stages. I'll go back here, as you can see, they had this um, Dell old handhelds. <laughs> Video's quite old as well, I mean. It's run off from like when factories and streets went into the plank, got into the plank, the cabbage like planked and the cabbage ate it. So it's a kind of question, the inquiry, the problem. Uh, location based Your job is to go out. AR is tied to a specific location here. Okay. As you can. 
trying to figure out what's happening. So it's, it's, it's a convoluted story. Um, I don't even completely understand it myself. So basically, this guy drowned in the lake, okay? Um, through the handheld devices that employ AR, AR technologies, the students have to go and collect information around the um, campus, okay? And then they use this information uh, to make up a theory of their own, okay? Uh, so this is situated learning. AR, location-based AR, uh, facilitating situated learning here. But it's also uh, place-based learning because it's connected to the local community. In fact, in that area of Wisconsin, pesticides uh, used in lakes are a big problem. So this guy could have, could have died because of the pesticides. This was just an example. I, I thought I'd share an example from MIT because that was a more credible than what, I say, than what I say. Although what I'm saying here, it's original content that I have researched. Finally. The last pedagogical reason why we should be using AR in education. Interdisciplinary learning, okay? I don't know how many of you actually remember the initial video I showed about AR being more than Snapchat filters, okay? In that video, for example, there were some apps being used that combined music and physics and English and art. Uh, just to, to, for example, to give you the example of the English and art one, uh, if you remember there was a, a kind of a colored horse coming to life when the student uh, uh, scanned it using uh, a mobile phone, and that colored horse coming to life is then used as a writing prompt for an English lesson. Mm -hmm. So a very good example of how AR facilitates interdisciplinary learning. Okay, interdisciplinary learning reflects the characteristics of the working world where problems are not divided into watertight compartments, like the subject areas in school. But all problems are interconnected. So approaching a topic from different points of view enhances the student's ability to understand ambiguity and multiple analysis mechanisms. You might start wondering now, why am I going off on a pedagogical talent? Ch uh, sorry, why am I going off on a pedagogical tangent? I am talking more about pedagogy, general tech trends, than I am about AR. Okay? And there's a very specific reason. Should AR fade? Should AR become obsolete in the coming years? What are we to do? What are we to do? with the knowledge we gained about it. We can reuse the pedagogical insights that we would have gained from it, hopefully from this webinar too, and apply them to a new technology. We all know that the technological landscape is uncertain and its trends are not always definable. But these basically are the main characteristics of AR sound. Versatility, flexibility, malleability. I guess the synonyms, some of them. Finally, we have the cognitive benefits. AR facilitates emotional engagement and uh, improves memory. Okay. So th this is just an example. Oh, I have the, yes, now you can see it. This is just an example of a, of a research that had been con con conducted. Mm, it specifically relates to 3D modeling uh, and usually 3D models uh, are strictly connected to AR because when the student uh, scans his or her phone, a 3D model appears. And so basically what it, what it shows here that the cognitive benefits that come with uh, using 3D are much higher than the cognitive benefits that come with using 2D. Finally, how can we implement all of this theory in our classroom? Okay, uh, this looks like a very complicated process and it would probably be a complicated process because some of you might have started thinking, okay, very well, 
This is a very well-researched webinar. Uh, I provided you with a, ro a lot of knowledge. Uh, I probably convinced you, probably, uh, that you should use AR in education. But, but, but how does that apply to the day-to-day -day teacher's life? So you should start like I started. Do some research on AR, okay? Implement free lesson plans that do not include AR, but include the pedagogies that AR can facilitate. The ones we have just examined, for example, place-based, mobile learning, interdisciplinary learning. Then to convince yourself that really AR does make a difference, implement the same plans using AR. See how you went, reflect, go back to the research you did, and the pain goes on. Again, uh, you probably know that um, a good structure of support is needed to implement a new technology in education. Okay, so if you're a school principal, you should still be doing some research on IR. Okay, even if you even if you know about it, <laughs> as I um, said in the introductory video, uh, even if you know about IR, there's always more that you can learn. I learned a lot just by researching on how to conduct this webinar, and I already knew about AR, okay? So teachers do need support in form, in form of professional development. And then of course, if she or he has time, the principal should observe the lessons to see um, what kind of effect such professional development uh, is, is having on teachers. And here we are, an action plan for industry professionals. They're the ones that we always forget. But without the industry professionals, I wouldn't even be able to conduct this webinar here today. Industry professionals, as you can see, they're usually recruit teacher ambassadors for their products. And I am one of them. Uh, I am an ambassador for Clever Books, uh, which is an augmented reality company based in Ireland that produces augmented reality experiences for primary school kids. As well as uh, <laughs> gaining uh, some commissions on every product I sell, um, I gain something more important, which is uh, knowledge on AR. Yes, another way in which you can implement uh, augmented reality in the classroom. And that refers uh, to the um, Lego thing I was talking about earlier. Okay, so this is a 3D printer. Let's say the students, they des design their own AR model using one of the content creation tools I introduced you to before, these ones, right? So they design it and then they can 3D print it. And this can be turned into a very good hands-on activity uh, because it's, it's, it's a common problem um, teachers are presented with, which is, how do we reduce screen time? How do we integrate all this digitalization with something more practical? So here's my answer. There are, of course, many more answers. This is the Gardner hype cycle, okay? Um, it's used to predict uh, technology usage over time, okay? So I wanna use a pen here to pointer, yeah. So where is AR in the Gardner hype cycle? AR, is just here, okay? AR hasn't reached, sorry, hasn't reached the plateau of productivity and technologies uh, only reach mass adoption once they go through the plateau of productivity. Hence why I emphasize the importance of the pedagogical benefits of AR, how we can extrapolate them, um, how, we can use them with other technologies, okay? Should they are disappear in the future? And I know some of you might be like, oh yeah, what would have been the point of all this webinar? What would have been the point of me even learning how to use AR technologies and learning how to implement them in my classroom if AR will disappear? Well, first of all, it's, it's, it's not gonna disappear all at once. It's gonna disappear gradually. So you, you, you still have time to use that. It's not gonna disappear within the next 10 years. Uh, from a less practical 
point of view, I'd say, you know, we're familiar with the concept of lifelong learning and how important is it, it is for teachers to be able to acquire new skills quickly. So if you can quickly uh, acquire knowledge on how to use AR in education, you're sort of training yourself on acquiring knowledge on many other skills relating to many other technologies uh, that, that might uh, come up in the future. Again, I really want to highlight this point so that in a few years, should they are become obsolete and maybe you, you won't have forgotten about me, uh, you will see that there was a point to this webinar. Okay, so the pedagogical insights we will have gained through the use of AR in education will outlast its decay and guide the development of new technologies. Now, the, the reason for this image here, okay, is that. It's not all as negative as I am presenting it. Let's take vinyl discs, okay? This, was, uh, this is a high-fidelity vinyl disc, which proposed uh, high-quality audio. Yeah? But high-quality audio, not just relating to the specifics of vinyl, but high-quality audio has a, has a culture, uh, has a trend, has a concept. And we can see that although the vinyl technology has not survived, the concept has survived. For example, we can see here the Bose um, headphones, which are widely used and provide high quality audio to its users. On an even more optimistic note, uh, it must be said that actually we've recently witnessed a revival in vinyl usage. So should they are disappear, it might even be that it will come back. So none of the time you're spending here listening to my webinar is wasted. You can see this is a question I ask myself. Virtual or augmented reality, which one is better? And again, I know it's a typical answer, but it's, it depends. If you want to send me an email with your um, specific uh, contextual uh, characteristics, you know, then maybe I can advise you on which one to use, you know, when to use it, how to use it. Uh, it must be also noted that one thing that I didn't say is that uh, the line that divides virtual and augmented reality is, is in becoming increasingly blurred. We are now witnessing something called mixed reality, okay, whereby <laughs> the it's more digital, but not all digital. There is still some interaction with the real world. Um, AR glasses are, very, are a very good example of that. So through AR glasses, the user, well, is wearing glasses just like you would in a, in a virtual reality context. So it's kind of more detached from the real world like the user would be mm, through a mobile technology. Uh, so it sort of resembles virtual reality, but at the same time, the user can walk around with these glasses, okay, and uh, can grab uh, holograms, which are 3D models that sort of appear in the room where the user is, and can sort of manipulate them, but still in a virtual, in a sorry, in a real world context, okay. So the object manipulation happens, happens in a real world context, but we still using the glasses like we would in VR. So you will see that it's, um, it, there, it's probably unclear. The distinction that I'm making here, it's unclear, but it's because uh, the line that divides the characteristics of these two technology is, is unclear in itself. So if you wanna, um, if you're on WeChat, you can scan the QR code here, we can keep in touch. Uh, if you have LinkedIn, you can scan the QR code here and we can keep in touch. And the reason is not just uh, one relating to self-promotion, it's because I really believe in, um, in the potential of technologies in education and I want to help you should you need help in implementing them in your classroom. And I also want help from you as in like, I like when it's a two-way conversation whereby I can gain insights from other people's questions.